So tell me a little bit about why you wanted to go to Nepal after the earthquake. Well, I grew up in Nepal, actually. So I, I was born in Delhi. So I, even at Hamlin, I would always say, when people used to ask me where you're from, I would say India slash Nepal. Uh, it's because I'm an Indian citizen, but I grew up in Nepal. So Nepal, so I'd say my two hometowns are Kathmandu and Minneapolis. It's because I know these two cities so well. Um, so my mom was here in the earthquake on April 25th. As soon as I realized how big of an earthquake it was, and as soon as I saw a few photos of our big temples that had collapsed, uh, I just knew. Um, it wasn't actually a, 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 a big decision. It, it just came to me that I should be there. After that, you know, just, just do what I can for, for the country in a way, because I grew up here, I know the streets, I know the language, uh, I have some sort of skills, I can improvise and see what, see what needs to be done without assuming what needs to be done. And then just, just giving, I've written over 50 articles now about the earthquake on my blog. Uh, and I have several more that are on other blogs that I haven't posted on my own. What has been the most memorable part of your time working there so far since the earthquake? It's been, it's been, uh, it's difficult to pinpoint one memorable thing because it's been extremely challenging because, you know, it's, it's a disaster area. There are a lot of people that are badly affected. Um, uh, just, I've met so many incredible people. I, I almost hesitate to say the word fun because it is a disaster area and there's a lot of people affected. But the experience has been extremely challenging, but also fun and, and rewarding because I have, I worked my my face off on a lot of a lot of things that, that I'll tell you about. But meeting people who are passionate and really go getters and from all walks of life, whether they're college students or uh, doctors who are in their forties and fifties working medical camps. So the most memorable, actually, just to directly answer your question, uh, I have never sat in a helicopter before. So uh, first, I, I, had, I just met, uh, I had a, my mom randomly mentioned a, a medical team from the U.S. was nearby. Um, so wanted to see if I wanted to go hang out with them for the day and see what, the health camp they were doing and write a story about them. Uh, so I went along and I met an, an American doctor. He's from Idaho, Dr. Fahim Rahim. So I was going to be on a helicopter taking about 400 kilos of supplies at a time. So about... There were, there were at least 3,000 kilos. Uh, I don't know how much that is in pounds. Probably 5,000 five, 5, pounds or something. Uh, into remote villages of Nepal. And I had not been to that part of the country before. Um, it's about 30, 40 minutes out. But it's one of the poorest districts in Nepal. So it was memorable because, one, I was on a chopper. And that was really cool. And there were, there were nice private um, choppers filled with supplies. But also that I, I knew for a fact that I was in love with a group of people that are actually having an impact shortly after the earthquake, when a lot of relief teams aren't yet organized on the ground. Uh, so it was nice to be with, with that, those folks and to see entire villages just flattened, like not a single house standing was, was unreal. Like it doesn't seem real. You see village after village where every single house, which is made out of um, you know, stone and mud, which, which works unless there is a 7.8 earthquake. Yeah. And, and then they have no chance of standing up. Uh, but that was memorable, flying around. And I've been on many uh, helicopter rides since then. So I, I call myself a freelance journalist, even yeah. though I, I'm a blogger, really, right? I studied computer science and management at Hamlin. Uh, how do you think that your time and experiences working with those majors and at Hamlin... Um, have helped to prepare you what, with what you're currently doing? So Hamlin was, I think, the, the perfect fit for me. I, I respect and value a classroom education, but the, the, the breadth of experience I got at Hamlin was, if you just talk about the classroom, that doesn't do justice to it. For example, I was involved with Husk very early on as a, as a freshman, uh, and even as a, as a freshman, I, I co-founded uh, Hamlin University Students for Tsunami Relief after the 2004 tsunami in Southeast Asia. So I, I was actually the one to send the first email uh, in December 2004 that got the whole ball rolling. Uh, and we raised over $10,000 as Hamlin, not, not me, but the entire community raised $10,000 in about four months. I think it was 200 days, whatever that comes out to be. 
uh, and then we donated that to UNICEF. Um, but then I was also the president of the International Student Organization, um, also a couple other smaller ones as well. So it was, um, you know, in college you learn how to learn, and I really feel like Hamlin did that for me because I was able to think critically and think on my feet, whatever situation I found myself in. And, and being in Nepal, there are no um, good answers on the ground. Because um, I wanted to make sure when I came to Nepal, I, I didn't assume what needed to be done. Because it was my first time in a disaster zone. And so a lot of people would assume that you go there and help people clear rubble. And that, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And that was my concept as well. But because I know this city very well, and it's not very big, you can walk across it in about two hours or three hours from one end to the other. So I did that my first day. Uh, I went through all of my old neighborhoods, and I found that the vast majority of Kathmandu is fine. It's only the very, very old parts of Kathmandu that are affected because they're made of stones and mud. Uh, some of them are temples, some of them are very old buildings. But for the vast majority of the cases, Kathmandu is fine. So what is my, the best use of my time, right? Uh, I, I'm willing to be, be the muscle and help move uh, stones if needed. But that wasn't what I found. I found that a lot of journalists uh, came into the Nepal for a few days and would write stories about death and destruction and rubble and the death count and then go back after four days. And I didn't feel that did justice at all to, the, to what's happening in Nepal. I, I don't, I'm not much of a writer, but it turns out an earthquake can teach you quite a lot very fast. So I started writing for Huffington Post, started my own blog, shared my photos, shared my articles. So yeah, Hamlin just taught me to think on my feet. And, and that's been, that's more than any line of code that I've written in my life. What would you most like people to know about the situation there currently? Simple answer is, it's not over, right? The work is far from over. In the short term, the, the search and rec rescue is over. Um, but the long-term rehabilitation of the country uh, w will take at least between six and eight billion dollars that Nepal does not have.